And today, in the lives of the saints, we're going to have a look at the story of St. Lawrence, how he became a martyr. It's an incredible story. Dear friends, on this channel, we take a look at the lives of the Catholic saints. We look at their incredible and their heroic examples and their sufferings for us. Not the false, soft, watered-down portrayals suitable for people of no faith. Here, we wish to see the true face of the saints that will lead us to heaven. And we ask you do help us in this apostolate by liking our video, sharing the videos with your friends and your colleagues. And and also subscribe to our channel, click that reminder bell too. The story of St. Lawrence is a fascinating story of epic heroism for Christ. And it culminated, it ended in the death, in his death, in the year 258 AD. So this is quite a long video, so we split it into sections. Just go to the end screen if you want to go to the next or the previous section. And so the prefect sent for St. Lawrence. St. Lawrence arrived and then the prefect, the hypocritical but wily fool, started to play this trick. And he said, you Christians complain that we treat you cruelly. But for now, there's no question of torture. There's a threat right there. What I ask is simple for you to give. I'm told that you priests offer your sacrifices in golden chalices and the sacred blood in silver cups and that in your meetings the wax tapers, the candles, are fixed in golden candlesticks. So let's bear in mind this was the year 257. The church was still young in those days and yet it sounds very similar to a Catholic service a Catholic Mass today, the sacred vessels, the offering of the body and blood of our Lord, as precious gifts. Bring me these, the prefect said. Bring me these concealed treasures. The emperor has need of them for the support of his army. It is said that according to your doctrine, that you must give to Caesar, you must render to Caesar what belongs to him. I do not think that your God has ever caused any money to be coined. He brought none into the world with him. He brought nothing but good words. So then give us the money and you be rich in words. We can see how wily and how crafty he is. So Lawrence wasn't shaken. Calmly he replied, The church indeed is truly rich. Nor has the emperor any treasures equal to its possession. I will take pleasure in showing you a valuable part, but you must allow me a little time to set everything in order to make a proper inventory. Well, the prefect was absolutely delighted with this outcome, but he did not understand the kind of treasure that Lawrence had in mind for him. So thinking he was already in possession of the, of the wealth, he had no problem and he gave the saint a respite of three days to sort these things out. And during these three days, Lawrence went all over the city from street to street, seeking out the poor who he had supported through the charity of the church. And he knew, of course, where to go, and the poor knew him well too. And then on the third day, they had all gathered. He'd gathered this whole treasure together. He placed them in rows before the church. They consisted of hundreds of aged, the aged, the decrepit, the blind, the lame, lepers, widows, virgins, and orphans. And then Lawrence proceeded to the residence of the prefect and invited him to come and see the treasures of the church. Well, the haughty official was astonished when he beheld the number of poor wretches. It sickened him to see all of these people and aroused anger and fury. And then he looked at the holy deacon with fiery scorn and contempt. It seems that Lawrence had almost been mocking him, but he had no fear of death himself. St. Lawrence turned to him and said, What? Are you displeased? He exclaimed dauntlessly. And Lawrence said, Behold, the treasures I've promised you. I've even added the gems and the precious stones, the widows and the consecrated virgins who form the church's crown. It has no other riches 
Take these and use them for your advantage, for the advantage of Rome, the emperor, and yourself. The prefect at this point was now enraged, unable to control himself. He said, do you thus mock me? Are there any signs of Roman power to be thus insulted? I know that you wish to die. This is your foolish vanity, but you will not take leave of your life so quick as you had imagined. I will see to that. I will protract your tortures. Your death will be slow and bitter. And you shall die, he said, by inches. But Lawrence was neither annoyed nor terrified. Because he feared God alone. So he said to him, Wicked wretch, do you expect to frighten me with these tortures? To you they are tortures, but to me they are none. I have long wished for such dainties. This is what the early martyrs of the church prayed for, it seems. And hearing this, the prefect was in a hurry for his revenge. He had the saint stripped. His naked body was then torn with whips, which were called scorpions. And the bleeding flesh thereafter, they applied red hot irons to the sides of his flesh to stop the bleeding. And in spite of this, Lawrence presented a very joyful countenance. While the prefect just became more and more enraged, he had now the fury of a wild beast. He just could not comprehend how any human could endure so cheerfully such punishments. So humanly speaking, is it even possible? And he then accused the martyr of being a magician and threatened that unless he sacrificed to the gods, his torments would just increase. So this is quite a long video, so we split it into sections. Just go to the end screen if you want to go to the next or the previous section. And do help us with our apostolate by liking our videos, sharing the videos, and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already subscribed. Click that reminder bell as well.